Psalm 145. We'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible said, I will. Didn't say I might. Didn't say I'd think about it. Didn't say if it was convenient for me. The psalmist said, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Can I say, if you're born again, you're going to praise his name forever and ever. Verse 3 says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, our hearts are overwhelmed at the thought that you, the great God of glory, loves us. God, you in all your holiness and all your might, uh, Lord, uh, all your fierceness uh, still has tender mercy and grace uh, for such a one as I. Father, I thank you, Lord, uh, that you looked ahead in time, uh, saw that there was a wicked people that needed a Savior, uh, and Lord, before the foundation of the world, uh, you became our Lamb. Uh, Lord, you knew you'd die for our sins. Uh, Lord, on that black day of history's uh, 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 events of history, that day uh, uh, that was the darkest of all days, uh, you, the darling Son of God, went to the Calvary, uh, laid down your life, and shed your precious blood uh, for such a worm as I. Uh, Lord, uh, you knew we'd need a Savior. Uh, Lord, you knew we'd need somebody who could give us peace uh, in uncertain times, uh, somebody who would uh, be able to uh, prevail and help us to overcome uh, all adversity, all fear, uh, everything that we would face. Uh, God, you knew uh, that we'd die and go to hell without you, uh, but you made a way uh, where a wretch could be saved uh, and go to heaven uh, and live for eternity with thee. Uh, Father, we thank you that this day has finally come. A day where we once again could assemble with the saints of God. A day where we could sing the old songs of Zion. A day where we could testify of your greatness. A day where we could worship you and adore you and extol you and bless your holy name. Father, thank you for the uh, sweet spirit of God that's in here this morning. Uh, thank you for the privilege that has fallen us. Uh, thank you, Lord, for being so good to us and sustaining us. Uh, now, Father, I pray, uh, Lord, you'd speak to hearts. Uh, send revival these days. Uh, edify the saints of God. Uh, God, certainly convict the sinners. Uh, God, help us to see them saved by your marvelous grace. Uh, God, I pray uh, you'd be with the sick and afflicted. Uh, be with little Samantha. Uh, be, uh, Lord, with uh, Miss Nancy and Herschel. Uh, God, be with Phil's family. Uh, God, have your way there. Uh, but, Father, for the next few minutes, uh, may our thoughts, uh, may our hearts uh, be centered upon Thee. Uh, and may You receive the preeminence. Uh, and may You uh, get all the honor and all the glory. Uh, and may we truly uh, say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, have Your willing way. Use this unworthy vessel. Uh, we'll bless You and praise You. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Uh, Amen. Amen. I want you to notice, first of all, as a way of introducing uh, uh, the raising up. Uh, the psalmist said, I will extol thee, uh, my God. Uh, that word extol means to raise up. Uh, Jesus said if he'd be lifted up, uh, he'd draw all men uh, unto him. Uh, uh, can I say this? Uh, uh, I don't think uh, 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 it should be said, but unfortunately in this day and age, uh, it must be said. Uh, we don't need to lift up the steeple. Uh, we don't need to lift up the church house. Uh, we don't need to lift up God's people. Uh, we don't need to lift up God. Uh, I mean God's man. Uh, we need to lift up the darling Savior of glory. Uh, we need to lift up Jesus. Uh, we need to let folks know uh, 
whose we are and whom do we belong to. We need to lift up the Holy One of Israel. We need to exalt the Lord. We need to exalt God. We need to let folks know we are essential because what we do is all about Him. He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy of all exaltation. We ought to exalt the Lamb of God today. He said, I will raise up the Lord. I'll stole thee, uh, my God. Uh, notice, if you will, not only the raising up, notice uh, he's going to do it repeatedly. He said, I will stole thee, my God, O King. Uh, I will bless thy name forever and ever. Uh, every day will I bless thee. Uh, now praise thy name forever and ever. Uh, it's a blessing to be able to praise him in church. Uh, but I want to help you with something. Uh, he's worthy of your praise on Sunday. Uh, he's worthy of your praise on Monday. Uh, he's worthy of your praise on Tuesday. Uh, and every day of the week. Uh, and the psalmist said, uh, he gave us seven days. Uh, and he's worthy to be blessed all of them because uh, I can't bless him enough just on one day uh, or just a second day uh, he's faithful every day uh, and he's good to me every day uh, and I'm going to bless him uh, and I'm going to praise him uh, and I'm going to repeatedly uh, let the world know uh, and let God know how much he means to me uh, Amen. like I said we're going to praise him forever and ever yeah. now I know a crowd that gets real nervous when folks get to raising their voice and get to shouting and get to hooping and hollering about the glory of God. It amazes me they don't get upset down at the ball stadium, but they get upset, upset when they come to church. Uh, I've heard folks say, well, you need to be holy and reverent. Uh, well, I would to God I could be holy. Uh, I'm a striving to be as holy as I can be, uh, and I'm about as reverent as a redneck can be. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, when I get to thinking about I was lost uh, on my way to hell, uh, I deserve to be there, uh, but a holy God uh, came my way, uh, and he saved my never-dying soul. Uh, I get a little excited. Uh, I get a little happy knowing uh, I'm not going to hell. Uh, I'm going to glory. Uh, I don't deserve to go to glory, uh, but I'm a going uh, because God loved me uh, and gave himself for me. Uh, listen, this is the most silent world you're ever going to be in. If you're unsaved and you die and go to hell, friend, all you're going to hear is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth uh, and there'll be screams, uh, horrible screams and agony uh, for all the ages of people paying for their own sins because they wouldn't let Jesus pay for them. But if you go to glory, <laughs> hallelujah. We're going to have a glorified body like the Son of God. Uh, you talk about a happy land. Uh, you talking about a shouting land. Uh, you talking about a praising land. Uh, forever and ever we're going to praise Him. Uh, we see the raising up. We see the repeated raising up of the Lord. Now notice the reason in verse number 3. He says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. The reason he's great, the reason he's greatly, and the reason is his greatness. Can I say, uh, you can't say anything else than the fact that God is great. Can I say, there's in this world none uh, that do it good. No, not one. But in glory, there's one who is great. And he's so great. Uh, because he takes the one that's not good and robes them in his righteousness, uh, washes them in his blood, uh, and makes them uh, under where they're right in his eyes, uh, and he's greatly to be praised. Uh, and when you get to thinking about him, uh, he's so great uh, that his greatness is unsearchable. Uh, there are not words to describe how great he is. Uh, our little fight like minds can't comprehend how great he is. Uh, but he's so great. Uh, and he's greatly to be praised. Uh, and we need to search and search and search uh, what we think great is. And he goes far beyond that, my dear friends. Uh, with that in mind, I want to preach on God is great. He's great. Say, what does God mean to you? He's just great. He's great. He's awesome. He's uh, uh, the wonder of wonders. He's uh, so great. 
that I can't even comprehend how great he is. You can go visit some of the seven wonders of the world. You can go look at some of the great edifices that have been built, and you can say, boy, that's great. But you can see what made them great. You can go look at some great sunsets and say, boy, that's great. But you know who made it great? Him. You go look at some great waterfalls. I think waterfalls are beautiful. You look at a great waterfall and say, look at the majesty of that. Go up there and look at the Niagara Falls and look at the greatness of that thing. And say, look at that, that's great. You know who made it that way? The one that's great. Amen. Uh, he did. Huh? I'm saying, anything in this world that you see, you can, uh, you can understand what makes it great. But when you get to thinking about how great he is, you can't put words. You can't put thoughts. You can't could come to any conceptual thought of how great he really is. The old hymn writer says, uh, how great thou art. And I say, amen. He is great. Uh, and he's greatly to be praised. Can I say, first of all, God is great in his character. He's great in his character. You've never met anybody like God. Uh, you've never aspired to anybody like God. Uh, his character supersedes anything that we can conceive of. Matter of fact, his, his character is so profound that if you were in your flesh came before him, you'd melt. That's how great he is. Huh? It's not one of those things where you would bow your head not to look at him in his greatness. You couldn't look at him in his greatness. Look at verse 17 of this psalm. Look what the Bible says about his character. It says, The Lord is righteous, in all his ways uh, and holy in all his works. Uh, uh, can I say the character of God uh, is he is righteous uh, and he is holy. Uh, he is high and he is holy. Uh, uh, can I say he's righteous in all his ways uh, and holy in all his works. Uh, there's nothing impure about God at all. Uh, uh, everything you buy to consume to eat uh, comes with a warning label of all all the things that are in it. Uh, uh, can I say there is nothing defiling in God. Uh, there is nothing you need to know. Uh, there's no warning labels. Uh, uh, the only thing you need to know uh, if you get in God and God gets into you, it'll be the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Uh, hey, He is high and holy. Uh, uh, can I say He is omnipotent. Uh, he has all power. Uh, 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 can I say He is omniscient. Uh, he is all knowing. Uh, uh, can I say he is omnipresent. Uh, he's everywhere uh, all the time. Uh, I'm telling you, God is great in his character. Uh, uh, nothing's ever caught him off guard. Uh, nothing's ever caught him by surprise. Uh, nothing's ever been too big that he can't handle. Uh, nothing's ever even challenged him. Uh, I'm telling you, he is holy. Uh, he is righteous. Uh, he is glorious. Uh, he is majestic. Uh, he is the greatest of the great. Uh, there is nobody like our God. Uh, he's great in his character. Mm. You'll find no character flaws. You'll find no flaw, no error. Amen. Nothing you can accuse God of in its stick. Oh, there's a lot of folks throw accusations at him. They do it in their ignorance. Amen. Can I say the Bible says he does all things well. Mm. He's great in his character. You've never met anybody like God. He'll never let you down because it's impossible for him to. Can I say he's not only great in his character, he's great in his creation. Amen. The Bible says in John chapter number 1, speaking of Jesus, in the beginning was the Word, capitalized, the Lord Jesus. How, how old is Jesus? He's always been. Always will be. He's the I Am. Huh? Said in the Word was God, the Word was with God. And the same was in the beginning, or in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Amen. Hmm? Say, what has He created? Well, He stepped out on nothing and made everything. I read something this week that they estimate that there are over a trillion stars in our galaxy alone. And he made them all. And he hung them all in their socket. And he called them all by name, the Bible says. 
We can't even accurately, how, who can even count to a trillion, let alone say one, two. You ever try to count the stars? You get to about 12 and say, did I count that one? But God knows them all and called them all by name. Can I say he made everything? God made everything uh, in its beauty. Can I say uh, there was nothing made that God didn't make? He spoke uh, a light into existence. Uh, he spoke the worlds into existence. Uh, uh, God uh, 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 spoke uh, all animal life, all plant life. Uh, uh, God created everything. Uh, but then he said, let us make man in our own image. Uh, and he bent down and he grabbed some dirt. And that's all we're made of, friend. Uh, and he formed and fashioned uh, a vessel uh, uh, with his likeness. Uh, and he breathed into that vessel's nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul only God can take dirt and make flesh and make muscles and make vessels make atoms and make molecules and make blood vessels and white cells and red cells and it's an amazing God makes your blood in your vein blue and then when you cut it turns out red I mean only God can make a little uh, a thing that looks like hamburger meat uh, and put in our head uh, and have all these waves uh, and all these thoughts uh, and can tell your fingers when to move uh, and tell you when to walk uh, tell you what to do uh, give you a conscience uh, to know the difference between good and evil uh, I mean God is great in his creation uh, did you ever just hold a baby and look at the miracle of that baby God did that God formed that baby in the womb. And you ever see uh, vegetation and plant life? The mighty redwoods out in California. God made those. But he also makes the little saplings in the fields. God made the amber grains of wheat. God makes the sunsets and the sunrises. God's the one that takes all the dew from the world and it causes it to rise back to the clouds uh, and forms those clouds and lets it rain again and recycles. Uh, God knew about recycling for long before them liberals did. Uh, God takes all the water, just keeps recycling it. Uh, uh, just keeps recycling it. Uh, God uh, uh, knows when we need rain uh, and he knows when we need drought. Uh, uh, God's the one uh, uh, that makes the grass, uh, that feeds the cows uh, and makes the cows Cows, uh, to feed us. Uh, I mean, God's good. Uh, uh, God's the one that makes cucumbers and tomatoes, uh, uh, corn. Uh, uh, he's the one that makes green beans, hallelujah, with ham hocks. Uh, I mean, God makes it all. Uh, everything, when God got done, he said he looked at it and said, this is good. Uh, God is great in his creation. Uh, God made you, friend. Amen. That's why God loves you. He formed you. If you're not saved, God loves you so much He died for you before you even knew what, it, what the importance of that was. Because God wants to save you so that one day you get to be with Him. Amen. Can I say, help you with something? God made man to fellowship with Him from the beginning. Man's want chose to sin. He broke the commandment of God. But God already had a, a, a plan in motion to redeem man before man even needed to be redeemed. You said, you sound like a Calvinist. No, the Bible says he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. I'm not a Calvinist. I'm just a Bible believer. God, in his omniscience, that knows everything, Miss Mary, he knew you'd need a Savior. Hmm? He knew you for you was even, uh, even thought of by your parents. Because he looked ahead in time and said, there's going to be a lady named Mary that needs Jesus. Amen. And so Jesus went to the cross and died for you. He'd already died for you in his mind before he even formed the world. Mm. What a God. He's great in his character. He's great in his creation. Can I say this? He's great in his compassion. The Bible says in Lamentations 3.22, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Say, Brother Doug, why weren't you afraid of the coronavirus? Because of that verse. 
is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Uh, are you listening? Uh, his compassions fail not. Uh, listen to me today. Uh, 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 whether or not it's coronavirus, uh, whether or not it's the flu, uh, whether or not it's cancer, uh, whether or not it's a heart attack, uh, whether or not I get hit by a bus, uh, whether or not a plane falls out of the sky and lands on my head, uh, 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 some way, somehow, if Jesus don't come, I'm going to die. Uh, uh, but I'm going to die on God's timetable, uh, uh, on God's uh, plan. And, uh, uh, but God is a compassionate God. Uh, uh, he's got a hedge around us. Uh, he's put an angel over charge over us. Uh, uh, God's in control. Uh, and nothing's going to come to you unless it goes through the hand of God. Uh, I bless the Lord uh, that His compassions fail not. Uh, I'm glad every day uh, I get up. Uh, I may not be lovable. Uh, I may not be on my best. Uh, I may fail His grace. Uh, but every day I wake up. Uh, he still looks at me in compassion. Uh, he still looks at me as his child. Uh, he still has love for me. Uh, he loves me on my good days. Uh, he loves me on my bad days. Uh, he just loves me. Uh, he's a compassionate God. Uh, he looked on us in pity uh, and in love. Uh, he knew without him we were helpless. Uh, without him we were hopeless. Uh, but he had compassion. Uh, hey, I'm glad uh, he didn't just have compassion on the wealthy. Uh, I'm I'm glad he didn't just have compassion on those that were born on the right side of the tracks. Uh, I'm glad he didn't have compassion uh, on just the good. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, uh, he gave his son for the whole world. Uh, he loved us all. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, he's a great God. Uh, make no mistake, Israel still his chosen people. But in his compassion, Jesus even died for the Gentiles. <laughs> Made a way. Roll dumb hillbilly rednecks like us could be born again. Oh, I'm glad for his compassion. Can I say his compassion was realized on Golgotha when he tasted death for every man. Can I say uh, it was realized uh, when they went down on that resurrection morning there was an empty grave. Uh, hey, it was one thing for him to die, uh, but he wouldn't have been God if he didn't have power to get up out, out of the grave. Uh, hey, uh, he said, I'm going to get up because uh, without me there is no hope uh, and because the grave couldn't hold him, bless God. Uh, hallelujah, it's not going to hold me either uh, uh, because I'm his beloved uh, and he is mine. Uh, I bless his holy name uh, and his compassion is realized uh, in grace uh, in grace uh, in grace uh, I'm glad he has grace uh, and grace abundant uh, and God's grace never fails uh, and I say he's great in his character in his creation in his compassion can I say he's great in converting the sinner mm. You can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps and get to God. You can't turn over a new leaf and get to God. You can't change your habits and get to God. Uh, you can't go to an AA meeting uh, and become sober and get to God. Mm. And I say, they tried to build a tower to heaven in Genesis. Didn't work out too good. So I want to tell you something. They're in the tower... Or there ain't enough good works to build you a bridge to get to the third heaven. Hmm? But God made a way where a sinner could be converted and made a saint of God and get to go to heaven. So how does that happen? Well, Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says this, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. You see, we were all conceived in sin. We we're all sinners by birth. We're sinners by practice. And can I say, Jesus has a remedy for our sin. It is the blood that he shed on Calvary. And he said, whosoever uh, that calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, if you're willing to turn from your sin and turn to the Lord, uh, repent and ask him to save you, he's willing to save you. He'll save you and convert you, blot out your sins and make you a child of God. Uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore if any man be in Christ, uh, he's a new creature. He's been converted. Uh, all things are 
passed away, behold, all things become new. Uh, hey, he takes all that black sin in your slate of life uh, and he wipes it clean. Uh, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as wool. Uh, why? Uh, uh, because God loves sinners uh, and he came seeking to save that which was lost. Uh, and friend, uh, he can't save you if he can't convert you. Uh, he changes you from a sinner uh, and makes you a saint, uh, a child of God. Uh, you're either a saint uh, or you ain't. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. Uh, I've been changed by the power of the Spirit of God. Uh, I've been converted and made a new creature in Christ. Uh, only God can do that. See, a leopard can't change his spots. An Ethiopian can't change the color of his skin. You can't add one cubit to your stature. But God can take a black heart of sin, wash it in his blood, and make it pure and white in his sight. Only God can change your heart. Your heart is deceitfully wicked. You don't even know yourself what you're capable of doing. But Jesus can change your heart. He can save you, seal you with the Spirit of God, and make you a new creature in Christ. You say, will that keep me from sinning? No. But it'd change your desires to where you don't want to sin. But he made provision if you sin after you get saved. He said, if we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us and forgive us of all unrighteousness. Amen. He's a converting God. He wants to continually convert us and make us more clean, more white, and closer to Him. Hmm? Uh, I don't know if you saw the sign. I said, don't, don't social distance yourself from God. Draw closer. That's what He seeks to do. He's great in His converting the sinner. Can I say this? He's great in His care. Look at verse 18. Verse 18 of Psalm 145 says this. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. God's great in His care. It was difficult the last month, six weeks, however long we was out of church, but God still cared for you. People testified this morning how God was good to them. He's great in His care. You say, explain that to me. Well, the Bible makes it clear that there's not a sparrow that falls from the, God, from the sky that God don't take note of that. God goes to every funeral of every sparrow that falls from the sky. Now, you and I, we see a bird laying dead on the side of the road. We don't think anything about it. God does. You know why? Because God cares. And if God cares for the sparrows, and God dresses every field with the flowers, and if God is... Is, 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 cares about the, the beautiful landscape of a field. Jesus said, you are worth more than many sparrows to God. He cares much more for you, friend. You say, well, i got a lot of problems going on in my life. Where's God? He's just a prayer away. Amen. Uh, he said, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. That word cast means to take it and throw it as far as you can to God. Let him have it and see how much he cares for you. Uh, then I thought about this lastly. God is great in his crowning. Look at verse 13 of Psalm 145. The Bible says, Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. There's not a king like the king of kings. It's not a lord like the lord of lords. His majesty is beyond comprehension. His glory is beyond description. His countenance is so glorious that looking upon him in your flesh would melt your eyeballs. He is amazing. And my dear friends, the Bible says that we don't know what we shall be. But we do know that when he appears... We shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. Yeah. Amen. He is not only great in his majesty and his dominion, because he's in control of it all. But one of these days, he's going to take our vile, mortal bodies, 
and change them and we'll put on immortality and we'll get a body fashioned like his and we'll be like him. And uh, 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 Brother Eddie, he has got crowns for those that have trusted in him. He's not only great in his crown and his coronation, but he's going to coronate us one day. And we'll be made kings and priests unto God. And we'll rule and reign with him in the millennial reign. And we'll be with him forevermore. He's great in his crowning. You see, our God is so great that Brother Doug, he not only died for us to save us, but he has gone to repair something beyond imagination for us. We're not deserving of it, but he's gone. And then when we get there, he's done all the work in our life. He saved us. He supplied every need. He's taken care of us. He's put hedges about us and all those. When we get there, he's going to reward us. And he did all the work. Now that's great. Uh, I mean, nobility in this world don't share their wealth. They try to amass all they can. But Brother Brian, he's going to take little peons like you and me. And he's going to say, I saved you because I loved you. And because I loved you, I'm going to reward you because I saved you. That is amazing. Now these, these, these grandbabies, they don't understand this. They don't understand why you all love them so much. They don't understand why you buy them nice clothes and you take care of them and you feed them so good. It's because you love them. Now they don't deserve it. Colton's meaner than a snake. <laughs> Not to me, to him. I'm just going what I heard. I mean, I got that 150 pound dog that's afraid of you. You're meaner than a snake, huh? They don't understand you're so good to them because you love them. I don't understand why God's going to be so good to us other than that he's great and that he loves us. He's so great, he has so much to spare that he's going to give some to us. Now think about that. Huh? He loves you, Brother Tommy. Tommy. Huh? Brother Charlie, he loves you. He loves your family more than you love your family. He is so great that one day when we lay our crowns at his feet, he's just going to pick them all up and give them back to us and know you've got to rule and reign with me. Huh? Amen. He is so great. So great. Friend, there's not enough adjectives. There's not enough words. There's not enough thoughts to put into how great he is. But I want you to know this. There's no one like him. And there's no one that can do for you what he can do for you. It's no accident or no chance that you're here today because he wants you to know how great he is. But he wants you to know it so much that he wants to prove it to you. And he wants you to realize how great he is. And friend, that only happens when you put your faith in him. If you're here today and you're not saved, you don't even know what life's about. You think you do. I thought I did. Amen. But old friend, the psalmist said it this way. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. The application is you can look at an apple, but until you bite the apple, you don't know how good it is. He said, preacher, I don't like apples. Well, you can look at a piece of cheesecake. Yes. You don't know how good it is until you bite into it. Amen. Uh, well, can I say something? Your very flesh, everything about God, your flesh hates. Amen. Your flesh thinks that it's foolish that we've got to come out to church and listen to guys spit and scream and holler and, and talk about this great God. And Your flesh don't like any of that. Your flesh don't want to be in bed. Or your flesh wants to be doing something else. But if you ever taste, if you ever... Just take God and apply Him to your life. Then you'll know. You know why these wicked politicians said we we're non-essential? Because they've never tasted of God. Amen. See, once you partake of God, He becomes the very fiber of the fabric of your life that holds your life together. Through and by Him we consist. Amen. He is the only thing that is really essential in this whole world. And he wanted you to hear that about him today. If you're not saved today, in a moment we're going to have an invitation. We invite you to come. Put your faith in him. Let him change your life. Amen. 
You can't change your life. You keep trying. You keep making a bigger mess of it. Why don't you just taste and see that the Lord is good? Why don't you just give Jesus a try? I'm reminded of a story. Mercy, some 22 years ago, Brother Ray. Almost 23. Of a young lady that had been visiting. I won't go into the whole story, but she'd been visiting our church down there in Owenton. We was having a revival meeting. Larry Seals was preaching, and on Saturday night of that meeting, before the preaching, singing got real good, and that little teenage girl came and gave her life to Jesus. After the service, the people that picked her up and brought her to church, when they was taking her home, she conveyed to her, to them how her mother's boyfriend had been abusing her and how she made up her mind. She had a bottle of pills in her purse. She made up her mind she was going to take all them pills and end her life that night. She thought her life couldn't get any worse. She might as well just end it. But she came to church. And that night she got saved. And this is what she told him. She said, I just thought I'd give Jesus a chance. We got her out of that situation. Jesus changed her life. Maybe here today, you just need to give Jesus a chance. Your life didn't amount to much. Why don't you just give him a chance? Just see if he don't change your life. If you're here today and you're saved, when's the last time you told God, thank you for your greatness? When's the last time you admitted to God how great he really is and how insignificant you really are? Well, if there's anything that should have been taught to us the last few weeks is how much we need him. Amen. When was the last time you told him how much you needed him? He's great, and he's greatly to be praised today, tomorrow, and every day, and forever, and ever. Are you doing your part? Are you extolling him? Are you blessing him? We'd see more people saved if more Christians would act like they were saved. God help us to bless the name of the Lord. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. If you're not saved, you come. We'll take a Bible and show you how to be saved. Well, it's real simple. You just need to admit to Jesus you need him. Folks are coming and praying. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We sure do bless your holy name. Lord, when you preach on your greatness or on the love of God, Lord, there, it's so hard to preach on because we, we can't describe really how great you are. It's just one of them things you have to partake of it, and then you know. Lord, I fear there may be some in our midst today that have never tasted and seen how great God is. I pray now through cords of love, the Holy Ghost of God would trouble their soul, but draw them in love to the great God of glory. Lord, help them to see their condition and help them to see they need you. I pray they'd come and repent, have their sins blotted out and be converted. Pray for the ch children of God. Lord, they'd realize what a wonderful and precious God you really are and how much we need you and also how much we take you for granted. God, help us to truly ascribe greatness to your name because you are worthy to be praised. Bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Help folks mind God. Whatever you're speaking to their heart about, help them to do it. And God, get glory to your great and glorious name. Well, thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.